Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy, Brandy Boy, back at it again with another Fallout 4 video. And for this video, I'm going to be addressing the worst gun design in the entire Fallout franchise. It's from Fallout 4, and it's called, uh, the Assault Rifle. By all means, this gun is problematic in every way possible. Its name, the mechanical design, its aesthetics, and the lore implications. It's honestly impressive how the developers managed to make every single aspect of this weapon absolutely detestable. It's simply a cursed abomination. It's like the developers took a bunch of random gun parts, then threw them into a vat with the forced evolutionary virus, and then from the green goop, crawled out the forsaken Fallout 4 assault rifle. It's just a straight up insult to anyone who even knows the most basic knowledge on firearms. At the same time, it's also offensive to veteran Fallout fans, because this rifle has no place in the lore whatsoever. I'll explain everything wrong with this gun in great detail, so I hope you're okay with witnessing a murder, because just like the Enclave, I'm gonna shred this mutant into little pieces. In the process, you may also learn some cool gun facts. Not only that, but I'll also showcase some lovely mods made by the community so we can see what the assault rifle should have been. So firstly, the most obvious issue that anyone can recognize, its name. For a supposed assault rifle, this thing is unnecessarily large and bulky, and very ugly too, unsightly even. Just looking at this thing, it seems like it'd weigh about 30 pounds. For comparison, real assault rifles are much slimmer, and they usually don't go beyond 10 pounds. After all, the purpose of an assault rifle is to be lightweight, so it can be easily carried and used by infantry while on the move. By no means is this an assault rifle. If anything, it resembles a whole damn zeppelin because of how obese and oblong it is. If you squint your eyes a little bit, it's hard to tell the difference between this thing and the Brotherhood's Pridwin airship. If assault rifles in real life looked like this, well, then call me a Democrat because I'd want to ban them. It's pretty obvious that this was meant to be a machine gun. In fact, the overall design and aesthetic takes inspiration from the Maxim, Vickers, and Lewis machine guns, all of which saw extensive use in World War I. The feature that stands out the most is the big truck muffler on the front end of the gun, known as a barrel jacket. Big barrel jackets like this are used to cool the barrel of the gun. For guns like the Maxim and Vickers, it's used for water cooling, but for the Lewis, it's actually a special air-cooled design. The Fallout 4 assault rifle, though, somehow manages to do both. On the standard and long barrel, they've got the cap and circulation tube meant for water cooling, but also the air fins from the Lewis gun. Now that is truly an ungenius design. It's got twice the cooling after all, so that means the barrel will surely never get hot. Meanwhile, if you take a look at the other barrel attachments, they look much more like the Maxim. Funnily enough, the vented barrel is the one that doesn't have any air vents. Bethesda really has an issue with naming things properly, it seems. This barrel does have water condenser tubes, but they just clip right through the front grip, which is odd. This uh, ring around the barrel has some clipping issues as well. Now that is certified Bethesda quality. However, this barrel doesn't have a cap or any opening, so I don't know how you would get any water into the jacket. Maybe you just pour it right down the bore or something. The ported barrel has the same issue, in addition to not having any tubes at all. So this one just has zero function whatsoever. It's just decorational, I suppose. Now what I think is actually kind of interesting about this design is that the water condenser for this gun is stored within the front grip. Or at least that's what I presume since that's where the tubes lead to. Let's just assume that's the case. Unlike real water-cooled machine guns, this is an all-in-one package, so you don't have to worry about carrying the parts separately. I don't think this would make for a very practical design though. It just makes the gun itself even heavier, and I bet the condenser would be less effective anyway. It's way smaller than a normal one, and it's also right next to the hot barrel. No matter what, it's not necessary for this gun to have water cooling. All of this confusion could have been avoided if they just went with a normal air-cooled design. But even then, the rest of this gun is just as perplexing. It's also got a, uh, a Maxim-styled bolt on it. 
but unlike the Maxim, this one is non-reciprocating, and I have no clue how that would work. Maybe it's just a charging handle, and everything else is on the inside. That would explain why this receiver is so wide. There must be something going on in there. Probably just a bunch of Bethesda magic though. I also don't know what's going on with this trigger here. It's not shaped like a trigger at all. It's more like an L, rather than a consistent curve. And all around, it's way too thick. If you look on the right side of the gun, you can see the same exact mesh. I'm not really sure what that's supposed to be. Maybe a uh, safety switch. No, that is just lazy. Whoever made this didn't even bother to create a custom trigger mesh, so they just reused another random part from the gun. Another interesting part are the iron sights. They look just like the sights you'd see on an anti-aircraft gun. So, are you trying to tell me this thing was meant to shoot down aircraft? I mean, come on. That would just be straight-up cannibalism. And it wouldn't prove very effective anyway, since it's chambered in 5.56. Not only that, but the iron sights turn invisible if you look at them from the front. Again, that is certified Bethesda quality. Or maybe it is an intentional design choice, so that the enemies don't know when you're aiming at them. <laughs> well, it's right in our face. Just look at this muzzle attachment. Like, what in the world is that? It looks like a Christmas tree. I don't know if there's any uh, real-world examples of this, but if there is, please let me know. When it comes to the furniture, it's actually modern in some ways. The front grip is just ripped right from the M249 machine gun. It's also got a collapsible wooden stock, along with the option for some blocky, tactical-looking modern pistol grips. So all that right there is an aesthetic difference of over 75 years. It's like putting a GT wing and competition skirts on a Ford Model T, or like toothpaste and orange juice. It just don't mix too well, and if you think it does, then you're a psychopath. There's a big old carry handle on this thing as well, which I can't complain about too much. It's a common feature on lots of machine guns. But unlike most machine guns, this one doesn't have the option for a bipod. So that implies that this gun is only meant to be used while on the move. That's further backed up by the fact that it comes with a 30 round side magazine instead of using a belt fed system. This is actually another similarity seen in the M249. The difference here though is that the M249 is a belt fed machine gun first, but it can take standard AR mags if needed. Pretty cool design. The Fallout 4 assault rifle though is magazine fed only. Your only other option is an 80 round tuna can. Machine guns don't have to be belt fed to be classified as one but that's what we all think about when we hear the word machine gun. This thing is just a total mess. It doesn't know whether it wants to be an assault rifle or a machine gun. It's trying to do both, but ironically enough, it ended up being neither. By definition, it literally can't be, because by default, this gun is semi-automatic, and the only way to make it full auto is to upgrade it with your gunsmithing skills. Now that is truly sad. I guess in the Fallout universe, gun control got so bad that they even banned full auto machine guns from the military. So in the end, we got the worst of both worlds. No true badass belt fed machine gun, and no true lightweight infantry assault rifle. What's left is uh, this amalgamation of trash. All around, this gun design is repulsive and super lazy as well. The animations are mediocre at best, and they don't even properly display how hefty this weapon would actually be. The uh, reload animation especially is rather dumb. Your character simply takes the magazine, moves it across their face, then shoves it right back into the gun. And that Maxim bolt from earlier? Yeah, your character never even so much as touches it. On an empty reload, your character just shoves in a new magazine and the gun magically begins feeding itself. This is quite an interesting design choice from the devs, because it's not like they don't know that you need to charge a weapon in order to cycle the first round into the chamber. They know at least that much, because every other gun in the game does have proper animations for it. All except the assault rifle, for some reason. I could also go on a tangent about how there's no proper tactical reload system in this game, but I'll save that for a different video entirely. Really, I think this comes down to laziness or lack of skill on the animator's part. Either way, they didn't bother to give this thing proper animations. But you know who did bother to? Well, a modder of course, by the name of Mr. Lame Gaming. He's working on reanimating all the guns in Fallout 4, and his work on the assault rifle is amazing. This otherwise disgusting gun is actually not too irritating if you just give it a good set of proper animations. 
I love these animations. They are buttery smooth, and you can feel the weight and heft behind each movement. Not only that, but the mod author actually took into consideration the features and design of the rifle itself. Starting with the equip, you can see that your character actually uses the carry handle to pull out the gun. And my goodness, would you look at that? He's actually using the charging handle. I can't believe it. And the reload? Mm, delicious. Instead of recycling the same magazine, he actually throws out the old one and pulls out a brand new one. Outstanding. Great work. Please, Bethesda, hire this man. He is ten times better than whoever is currently doing your animations. Still though, even these beautiful animations can't fix the design of this gun. It was doomed from the start. You see, the Fallout 4 assault rifle was actually the very first weapon concept made for Fallout 4. And it should have stayed that way, as a concept. But unfortunately, it made its way into the final game. The whole reasoning behind the bulkiness is that the devs wanted it to look good in the hands of Power Armor. Well, first, this gun don't look good under any context, and the stock clips right through the forearm of Power Armor anyway, so they didn't even consider how Power Armor units would actually hold it. Call that a lack of foresight. It doesn't make sense either way, because Power Armor was specifically made so that soldiers could carry heavy weaponry, such as 50 caliber heavy machine guns. So it's simply a waste to have Power Armor units carrying around 5.56 assault rifles when they're meant to be equipped with giant machine guns and handheld artillery. The Fallout 4 assault rifle was once intended to be a 50 caliber heavy machine gun, and you can see the remnants of that on the suppressor attachment. It says uh, 50 caliber on it. But early on in development, they decided to neuter it and make it into the lame 5.56 assault rifle that we know today. I'm not sure why they made that decision really, probably something to do with time constraints. They didn't get to finish the assault rifle they were working on before release, so they took the machine gun they already had, then adapted it to fit that role. That's my theory, and it would explain quite a bit. Still though, it's a rather dumb decision, and whoever approved of it, I hope your pillow is forever warm on both sides. The only reason why the devs made this design is because they thought it would fit their 1950s retro aesthetic, but ironically enough, this gun isn't quite the best choice to represent the 1950s. This technology was already obsolete by World War II. Big water jackets like this were switched out in favor of much lighter, air-cooled designs, and there's not much reason to go back. Don't get me wrong though. Those old World War I machine guns still saw a good amount of use in World War II and throughout the 20th century. In some places, they are still being used to this day, but nobody is making new ones. That's the big issue with the Fallout 4 assault rifle. Since it was specifically made to look good with power armor, then that means it must have been produced in the 2060s or 2070s, yet its technology is stuck in the 1880s. That means they're using up valuable resources to produce a gun that is inferior to what they already have, and there's just no sense in doing that. This rifle sports zero advantages over the other assault rifles and machine guns in the Fallout lore. If anything, it's a liability and will just get you killed. Or maybe the Chinese would just straight up laugh at you, because it looks like a toy that would be made in one of their child labor factories. For an assault rifle, they could have just gone with the assault carbine from New Vegas, but it seems Bethesda is unwilling to admit that Obsidian does it better. Instead, they used up a bunch of time only to produce a design that is inferior in every aspect. Their motto must be work harder, not smarter. Now what's really funny here is that Fallout 4 in particular leaned heavily into the whole weapon customization thing, and the devs themselves wanted a versatile assault rifle so they could explore the customization system. Hmm, gee, I wonder, What's a highly versatile assault rifle that has tons of customization options and is already present in the Fallout universe? You buffoons! The M16, the M4, any of those Armalite pattern rifles. Like come on, the AR-15 platform is probably the most customizable rifle in the whole world. It would have been perfect for this game. They could have had a field day with the attachments, but... Ultimately, they ended up limiting themselves to this regressive design, and really, there's no good reason as to why. Now we're just left wondering what could have been. Actually, we don't have to wonder. Fortunately, we've got mods, and lots of them. 
The real question here is, which mod should you download to replace the Fallout 4 assault rifle? Well, the AR platform is very popular, and as such, there's plenty of AR mods. The first one I'll recommend is the Service Rifle by Deadpool. This one captures the Service Rifle and Assault Carbine, just as they were in Fallout New Vegas. Well, mostly. There have been some changes, for the better I'd say. Overall, the texturing and models are top-notch, and there's a bunch of awesome attachments. It can look like an old, beaten up piece of junk that some raider scavenged up at a scrapyard. Or you can upgrade it to look like a modern tactical M4. In addition to all that, this mod includes several unique variants which can be found in set locations, including fan favorites like the Survivalist Rifle and the All-American. My only gripe with this mod is that the animations are a bit, uh, clunky, but all around, it's a fantastic mod, and it's the perfect choice if you want a completely lore-friendly assault rifle. I do like the classic service rifle from New Vegas, but its design isn't 100% authentic. So, if you're like me and prefer something more genuine, then you should take a look at the service rifle expansion project by Nady. Now this one adds in a real M16. It covers the platform as a whole, all the way from the 1960s to the mid 2000s. You'll see parts from the M16A1, A2, A4, as well as the M4 and even the Mark 18. My favorite variant has got to be the M16A2 with the Grenadier Barrel and the M203. What can I say? It just looks aesthetic. And yes, the M203 is more than just a decoration. It actually works. That feature alone makes this mod one of a kind. Other than that, there's also a few unique variants, such as the classic AR-10, the Honey Badger, and even the Prototype XM-16. Without a doubt, this is an awesome mod. It's basically a one-stop shop for all your AR needs. And I'd go with this one if you want a real-world M16 instead of the New Vegas surface rifle. Personally though, my favorite AR mod is the Mark 18 by FX0X01. Everything from the textures to the sounds and animations, it's top tier in every way. It's also one of the most customizable weapon mods for Fallout 4. There's tons of options for every single part, and you can expand that even further with multiple add-ons made by other modders. You can create all kinds of different tactical AR builds, or keep it classy with the retro M16. Overall, I'd say this one is the highest quality AR mod. Since it's more focused on the modern aesthetic though, I can't say it's the best fit for a Fallout game. So, I can see why some wouldn't want this rifle in their game. For a more vintage AR mod, allow me to introduce the Ultimate M4 pack by Warfighter. This one adds in the M16A1, the M16A2, the M16K, the CAR-15, the XM4, and even the Mark 18, all of which are ported over from Call of Duty. Say what you want about Black Ops Cold War, the gameplay was mid, but these rifles look good, and their animations are amazing. The attachments especially are pretty interesting because uh, they aren't real, but they are plausible. It allows you plenty of customization, all without sacrificing the retro aesthetic. So it's a mix of authenticity and fantasy. And that sounds right up Fallout's alley. All around, this mod is pretty sweet, and I'd say it's a great choice for a high-quality AR mod that fits Fallout's theme. Whichever mod you choose, I hope it serves you well. And I'm curious, which mod do you think is the very best one to serve as Fallout's assault rifle? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll see y'all in the next- But wait a second, what about the other half of it? The Fallout 4 assault rifle was first intended to be a heavy machine gun. We still need one of those in the game. Well, obviously, the most suitable 50 caliber machine gun for a Fallout game would be the M2 Browning. I have no clue as to why the devs didn't go with this gun in the first place. It is the absolute most perfect machine gun for that classic 50s aesthetic. It's been the main heavy machine gun for the US military since World War II, and it's so timeless that it's still being used to this day, and I can still see being in service until 2077. Bethesda definitely missed a huge opportunity with that one, but don't worry, they made up for it in Fallout 76. Nobody plays that game though. However, I did find a Fallout 4 port of the Fallout 76 heavy machine gun. I honestly can't remember why I found it though, and it's uh, it's not on the Nexus anywhere. But uh, anyway, honestly, this gun isn't as high quality as I'd like it to be. It's made by Bethesda after all. So please, if there's any talented modders out there, we desperately need a genuine M2 Browning with custom animations. I would pay all of the bottle caps in the entire world for such a masterpiece. But for now, a good alternative would be the Machine Guns Rebirth mod by Skibida. 
It's got a pretty sweet 50 caliber machine gun, which is referred to as the Mark 22. Pretty cool design on this one. What's even better is that this mod includes three other weapons. A 308 heavy machine gun, a 20mm flat cannon, and even a 40mm automatic grenade launcher. So, this mod will satisfy all of your heavy weapon needs. My only gripe is that they all have vanilla animations, but that's not a huge deal. All around, they are super fun to use, and they fit perfectly into Fallout. So there you go. That's what the Fallout 4 assault rifle should have been. First, the concept itself should have been split into two different weapons, with the assault rifle half being the M16, and the heavy machine gun half being the M2 Browning. This thing though? Ugh, it needs to be deleted from the annals of history entirely. I really hope it gets retconned out of existence in the next Fallout game. At the same time, I have to thank Bethesda for creating this unholy abomination of a firearm, because it's actually what inspired me to start my YouTube channel. I kid you not, my first video is all about assault rifle mods for Fallout 4, because I hated the vanilla one so much. If it wasn't for this god-awful assault rifle, I may have never started this channel in dedication to fixing this terrible game that I love so dearly. And I'm nowhere near done either. Next time around, I'll pick another weapon to shred into little pieces and then show you what mods you can use to fix it. If you like this video and want to see more like it, then go ahead and nuke that like button. While you're at it, go ahead and tell me what you think about the Fallout 4 Assault Rifle. If you hate it just as much as me, then comment Fallout 4 Assault Rifle Hate Gang for Life down below. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release a new video. And with all that being said, I'll see y'all in the next video. Either way, they didn't bother to give this thing proper animations. But you know who did bother to? My mom!